My name is Iman Seime, and I'm a visual artist. I'm a professor at Westfield State University in uh, Westfield, Massachusetts, and I'm currently working on a really, really, really cool project titled Benediction. My family hails from um, Western Africa. My, my mom and my dad are from Nigeria. Uh, Ima means wealth. Nse means looking up to God or searching for God. And Ime means patience or patience of God. And so I, I feel constantly um, in my studio, outside my studio, especially in my artwork, I feel like I'm living out my name and finding my voice within the art realm. As someone who is particularly interested in using what I do as an artist to somehow directly benefit my community, to change uh, the things that I'm seeing that need to be changed, and maybe to speak some form of hope um, into people who need it. My current project, Benediction, feels like something I've been developing for a few years now, even though it's, it's relatively new in my studio as a physical project right now. My last studio project, titled 17 Years Boy, followed the life and death of Shavon Martin. And I used the cicada insect, an insect that has a gestation period under the ground of 17 years. And then it swarms. Every 17 years, the cicadas come out of the ground and, uh, uh, and, they, and, they, and they kind of have this party on, in, in the world, you know, where they're visible and you can hear Hear them, and you can see them, and you can and you can see their 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 skins cast on the ground, and then they disappear again. I was interested in this short life cycle that they have above ground, but this lengthy life cycle that they have below the ground um, as creatures that are buried, that reemerge, that emerge and reemerge in these cycles. And somehow fusing Trayvon Martin's life with that insect and having a conversation about his his very short life and his very abrupt death. In that project, um, what was born is Benediction, my current studio project, which is taking on a life of its own and it's dealing with organisms in its own right. Benediction um, deals with a group of angels that have been cast down to earth and their plight is that they have been bound to the skin of, of black boys and men. And they are to serve as witnesses to the struggles, to the triumphs, to the traumas of black boys and men. They serve as witnesses, um, as intermediaries between black people and, and God. It's a fitting moment for this uh, conversation to be happening in my studio just uh, with everything that's going on in the world right now with, uh, with, uh, with George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery and, and some of the things that have just happened in 2020. But really with this cycle, this cycle of, um, this cycle of America's demonstration that, that black lives do not matter. For me, the essence of this project is is coming together around, around organisms, this time around the falcon and the winged black man, um, who's really an angel in this case, and somehow, sometimes he shows up as an angel, sometimes he is, he's wingless, but he's existing. Other times he's listening to the ground. And in my mind, in one instance, he is listening, waiting for his brothers to come out of the ground, um, not unlike the cicada insect, but he's also listening to the voices, to the cries of his brothers that have been buried or whose blood lives in the ground. I'm interested in the, the, the fusion of, um, of uh, biblical conversations and angels and the plight of black men. Uh, there is this uh, moment in the Bible when um, Cain and Abel, who are brothers, um, Cain slays uh, Abel because he's jealous of him. And, um, and God uh, approaches Cain and says, hey, what have you done? And, and Cain is like, I haven't done anything. He's like, you're lying. I can hear the blood of your brother. It cries. It cries for justice from the ground. And so in my mind, these things are all connected. These gigantic figures, some of them are winged, showing that they're angels. Some of them are wingless, right? Um, showing that they're black men. And the angel and the black man are existing at the same time. The wings that I'm modeling, the angels after, are falcon wings. And the idea of this bird, of, that's a bird of prey that, that's searching for something that's, that's that's seeking 
out something. Like my middle name, Nse, searching for God, seeking out things. All of these things are absolutely connected for me. And it's a lot, right? It's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot when you hear it. But for me, within the realm of the studio space, these various atmospheres, these various um, worlds are literally colliding. And as a black man, as an African black man, um, who is also a Christian, um, who is kind of watching the world fall apart in a way, noticing that those who are the very voiceless, you know, um, continue in many ways to not have a voice. I'm hoping that this project lends a voice um, to those people. And I'm hoping that this project becomes a type of witness in and of itself, in the manner that these angels um, have been cast down to earth and bound to the bodies of black boys and men, right? That's, that their, their torment is that they're bound to the bodies of black boys and men. That's their torment. And now you have to serve as witnesses, right? You have to communicate to the heavenlies what is actually happening. Because maybe if you communicate it, maybe that will bring justice to the people who are suffering. Maybe you have to bear this, this suffering for this moment so that real justice can, can, can come to people who need it. I'm hoping this body of work does that, right? And so there is a certain amount of struggle that is coming with developing the body. I, I can't say I know exactly what I'm doing with it, but I am, growing increasingly more confident in my voice and in the hopes that my voice can lend new voice to people who don't feel like they have one.